the Henderson Hasselbalch equation allows us to relate the pH of the solution, the pKa of a particular functional group on a molecule, and the ratio of the protonated to deprotonated versions of a particular functional group on the molecule. And the Henderson Hasselbalch equation is that so we have the pH of our solution is equivalent to the pKa of the functional group of interest plus the log base 10 of the ratio of the number of deprotonated uh, forms of that functional group to the protonated forms of that functional group. And to give an example of how we can apply this in practice, uh, we'll examine glutamic acid. And glutamic acid, as we'll recall, is an amino acid, and its R group is gamma uh, carboxylic acid, as I remember it. So if we examine the alpha carbon here, we will have the um, carboxylic acid port part here, uh, the proton on the alpha carbon, as well as the N-terminal amine, sorry, And we will have the alpha carbon, the beta carbon, the gamma carbon, and the uh, carboxylic acid. And I will draw that out like so. And um, so for clarity, depending on what the pH of the solution is, we've got three functional groups here that can either exist in their protonated or unprotonated state. And so at a pH of 7.2, which is your blood's pH, uh, we would expect this, these two functional groups to be in their deprotonated state because they're acids and they would donate their protons to the solution. And then this amine is a base and it would take in a proton from your solution and have a positive charge. And we can look up the tabulated pKa values for each part, each functional group within this biomolecule. And if we do that, you would see that the C-terminal uh, carboxylic acid has a pKa of 2.2. The um, R group's pKa has a value of 4.3. Let me just make this arrow a bit cleaner. And the amine on the N-terminals has a pKa of 9.7. And so the key intuition to have when analyzing a biomolecule in solution is this. So if pH of the solution is less than the pKa of the functional group, then the functional group gets the proton. And um, else the solution gets the proton. And so what do I mean by that? So in this glutamic acid, there are three boundaries that we are interested in. So we'll have uh, when the pH of solution reaches a value of 2.2, when it reaches a value of um, 4.3, and when it reaches a value of 9.7. And so we will have four regions of interest here that we can consider. And in practice, this is um, what happens as we are performing bioassays, such as pulling an amino acid uh, through a uh, PI plate. And we're trying to figure out where its isoelectric point is. And so where it falls uh, is where uh, we can um, we'll, where we'll know the molecule carries a neutral charge. And so when, so the four regions we were interested in is when the pH solution is between 0 and 2.2, 2.2 and 4.3, 4.3 and 9.7, and 9.7 uh, and up to 14. And so in this first region, when the P 
pH of solution is lower than the lowest pKa uh, in glutamic acid, what that means is there's going to be a lot of protons looking to find a place to stay. And what that means is on glutamic acid, in that particular regime, uh, we will have this functional group, the carboxylic acid on the C terminus, be protonated. This functional group on the R group be term, um, protonated. And this uh, amine will also be protonated or in its protonated form. Consequently, we will get a charge of zero plus zero plus one. So the overall charge of this molecule will be one when, uh, sorry, when the pH of our solution is between zero and 2.2. Now, if we increase the pH above 2.2, this uh, carbox, um, carboxylic acid here will donate its proton to the solution and take on a negative formal charge. And so this would lose its proton, take on a negative charge, and um, this carboxylic acid on the R group would remain protonated, contributing a zero charge. And therefore, the charge of your molecule at a pH 2.2 will be equal to zero. So this would be the isoelectric point of glutamic acid. Now, if we continue to raise the pH of our solution, our solution is going to want protons more and more as we raise the pH. Uh, this uh, carboxylic acid will then donate its proton to the solution. The molecule will then take on a uh, total charge of minus one. and Increasing it further, past 9.7, this amine will give up one of its protons and become NH2, which has a charge of zero, and therefore your total molecule will have a charge of minus two at that pH. And just writing this out, total charge of the molecule uh, we can see how it is evolving as our solution pH is changing. And so now to actually uh, get back to the henderson hasselbalch equation, sorry about this tangent, what we would find is that if we wanted to know at a pH of 7, 7.2, uh, what is the ratio of the uh, unprotonated form to the protonated form of the alpha carboxy group. And so to do this, we will consult the henderson hasselbalch equation here. We would plug in the pH of our solution, which is 7.2. We will subtract that from the pKa of this particular functional group, which is 2.2 and we will raise it to the uh so we will raise this quantity uh and put that into the power that we raise 10 to and that must be equivalent of the ratio of the unprotonated form to the protonated form and this is equal to 100,000 so there are 100,000 times more unprotonated carboxy uh carboxylic acids present, and it's referred to as a carboxylate, uh, for this particular part of the molecule at a pH of 7.2. And so this concludes how we can use the henderson hasselbalch equation uh, in practice to derive these relationships, as well as how these molecules are evolving over time, so, uh, or over a pH. And so another thing to note is this value of 100,000 is only applicable at a pH of 7.2 as we vary this quantity, as we make our solution more basic, the ratio will increase. And so uh, I hope you guys find this useful. Let me know if you have any questions and thanks for watching.